Welcome to another Fresh Service Tips and Tricks. My name is Kyle Hamilton. I'm a sales engineer with Flycast Partners. And the title of today's video is Using Webhooks and Web Requests with Workflow Automator. Did you know that it is possible to actually automate tasks not only within Fresh Service, but also external to Fresh Service using webhooks and web services within Workflow Automator? Web requests and web hooks provide a utility for Fresh Service customers to be able to easily integrate and communicate with external third party applications. Customers use web hooks and web requests as a way to synchronize and collaborate and share data with users outside of Fresh Service. Today, we're going to go through a short example and talk about how you can use web hooks and web service calls within automations to help you drive efficiencies into the operation of the service desk, as well as be able to disseminate information uh, and share information with external applications and external tools. So we'll talk first about how you utilize and how you can find access to the workflow automator, as well as being able to leverage the web hooks and web services within your automation um, processes. So in this case, I've got a simple workflow automator set up based on incident creation. In this case, uh, I'm connecting to Slack. So in the case where we have a high priority incident that gets created within Fresh Service, I want to then post that information outside of Fresh Service into an external tool like Slack, or it could be another you know, application like Microsoft Teams or Office 365, on and on. But these web service calls you see here provide me with the ability to access commands, in this case, posting a message, so that I can publish this information regarding this high priority ticket to users who may not log in to Fresh Service on a daily basis. But we wanna get that information regarding this high priority issue out to them regardless. This gives me an easy way to get out of the service desk and into those external tools that are gonna get those viewer eyes and all the, the individuals that use those tools visibility into service desk information um, when you have a high priority issue event or something that affects a lot of users. So in this case, because it's based on a trigger, in this case, the creation of a high priority ticket, we're going to go through and I'm going to submit a ticket here just so you could see the operation and what that, that web service or web request actually looks like when it actually fires. So I've got a high priority ticket set up and ready to go. Now we're going to see when I submit that ticket to Fresh Service, my workflow automator is going to kick off. Of course, I could see the, the update related to the new ticket. But then in short order, I'm also going to get other notifications that are going to come in, in this case, from Slack. So you can see that the Fresh Service bot in Slack has now posted that high priority message out to the Slack channel so that customers that are out there viewing and communicating, collaborating within Slack now have visibility to be able to see that there is a new ticket, you know, a high priority issue out there. So if I look at the, the Slack bot, here we go on service desk here, you'll see that I get these high priority messages sent out as Slack channel you know, messages. So again, uh, these users don't have to be within fresh service. They may spend the majority of their time collaborating and conversing in Slack. Now they have access to be able to get ticket updates, information, uh, details related to high priority events, things of that nature. And that same thing can be done with other external tools this just happens to be an example using Slack. Now, that particular action or that web request, that is available to you within Workflow Automator through this app function. So you'll see when I drag and drop this 
under my workflow, I'm going to get a list of those applications that I've installed into my instance from the Fresh Service Marketplace. I can start typing or I can search through this list. In this case, I'd selected Slack. Then it gives me the choice of selecting the particular Slack command that I want to make. Whether I'm going to create a channel, am I simply going to post a message to an existing channel? Am I dealing with user management or I'm creating a new user account? Things of that nature. And then based on the selection of that command, it's then going to provide me with some detailed information that's going to be required in order to make that command successful. If I want any details or better understanding of what that information entails or is, I can always click on this little what is box at the top and it'll give me some detailed information regarding some of those inputs that are going to be required. Down at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a test app action button, which will allow you to put in an input in this case to actually try out that particular action. So if I want to test out the creation of this channel, in this case, I can provide the input and you'll see the box on the right hand side that will appear that will give me the status code as well as the success or failure of the operation. Now, in this case, I should be creating a, a Slack channel for channel 761. So I should be able to then browse over to my channel listing within Slack and then see that I've now got a new channel for that particular ticket that's been created, all driven through the workflow automator and using a web request. Now, you can do the same thing within workflow automator using web hooks. They perform the same basic function. They perform the same basic operation. They are accessed separately or differently whereas the web's requests are driven through the app action, your web hooks are gonna be available to you through your standard action block. So I can find the web hook action in that action block as a part of my action dropdown. So along with setting priorities and changing field values, you'll see an option in there for triggering web hooks. When you select that, it will essentially bring you to the exact same set of screens, uh, fields that we saw previously when dealing with the app action. Now, in this case, you are not calling a specific act application, but you are calling a specific URL. So whereas the applications like Slack, uh, Azure Active Directory, Microsoft Teams, you're not having to define, you know, a specific URL that you're issuing that command to, you're issuing it to the application. Um, and that takes care of all the address information for you. So in the case of webhooks, you're required to actually put in the destination of the command to what machine or what address are we going to issue this command. But the essential elements are the same. It's going to require you to provide the inputs. You have a test webhook button that's at the bottom of this screen, similar to test app action, so that you can check out the results and make sure that it functions the way that you expect it to. Um, the big difference between webhooks and web requests is what you can do with them within the automator afterwards with web requests, I have the ability to test the results of that web, web request. You'll see I'm doing that right here above. So I can actually then check after I make that web request to find out if it was successful or not. That way, if it wasn't, then I can take a certain action. If it was, then I can continue on with my process the way that I intended. I can do that with web requests. However, if I were to use a web hook to do the same thing and create a channel in Slack, I would not have the ability to test to see whether it was successful or not. So if you need to branch 
your logic out within Workflow Automator at all, you're going to want to use Web Request exclusively because that will allow you to determine if that command was successful, did it actually create the channel, did it post that message or do whatever you asked it to do, and then based on that result, make decisions out on how to proceed. Whereas the webhook is going to be more or less a, a fire and forget it. It's going to issue the command and it's going to continue processing that workflow regardless of whether it was successful or whether it failed. So make sure that when you're building your workflows, you understand that one key difference. And that way you can use whichever method is going to be easiest for your particular workflow. Thank you for watching another fresh service tips and tricks presented by Flycast Partners. If you like our videos and this content, please like and subscribe to always be updated on the latest tips and tricks. And if you need more fresh service help or resources, reach out to Flycast Partners Professional Services at info at flycastpartners.com.